So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Funny Side Up by HBC Medical Assistance. A first disclaimer and a declaration. This is an internal family panel. This is all HBG family. So all the panelists are from the HBG family. So if anything goes wrong, anywhere it goes wrong, do not get stressed. It is within the family. Even in fact, all those people who are attending are from the extended HBG family only. So even if something goes wrong, please don't be upset. It is within the family. More importantly, I would like to give a disclaimer here, especially to the panelists, that if there is people who are trying to make each other laugh, especially me who is trying to make all the participants laugh, if something goes bad, some jokes is not getting understood properly, please do not blame me. It is all in good humor. But I assure you, all the humor will be away from caste, creed or custom. So we will avoid these three words. Lastly, all those people who are unmuted, who are panelists, if I can request you to keep your phone on silent. Uh, the, the participants, you can always post your queries on chat box because you will remain uh, muted as of now. Avoid putting greetings on the chat box because it will clutter, then I will miss the important messages. So avoid putting greetings there only important messages. We have some very prominent family members who will be sharing their thoughts. I will introduce them one by one as their chance to, chance to speak comes up. So here we begin now, Funny Side Up by HBG Medical Assistance. It has to start with an introduction, so let me start with an introduction. In a land far away, once upon a time, not so long back, there used to be a very handsome, not so old man. Ladies and gentlemen, that is me. My name is Dr. Abhik Moitra. And the introduction has to start with me because I am the moderator. I, people call me Dr. Abhik Moitra. And yes, I am a doctor, but I often avoid putting the tag doctor in front of me because of the simple fact that I specialize in a stream most of you may not even have heard of it. My specialization comes in naturopathy and yogic sciences. And I'm sorry, I don't have much to speak about that because it's a very unknown territory. It is best that you know me as your humble, yes sir, yes madam person at HBG because that is how you have always known me. I will always say, yes, sir. Yes, madam. So that is my small introduction. On our panel, the first speaker would be Dr. Vole Kukoi. Now, I have known him, Dr. Vole Kukoi, who is the managing director at Ace Medicare Clinic. I have known him for last 12 years. He had a phenomenal journey in healthcare entrepreneurship. The first time I, I knew him he, during his visit in India, and then he invited me to Nigeria to participate in the annual CME programs of Ace Medicare. The first time I went on his invitation, there was a biz, big mishap that has happened. The two doctors who were supposed to uh, travel with me somehow were not able to make it. We tried to connect them. I hope Dr. Kukoi remembers this. We tried to connect him through internet, but even that did not work. Finally, I was supposed to make those two presentations and I was absolutely no doctor, but I was supposed to make those two presentations. And from there started my journey of becoming a doctor. Thank you, Dr. Kukoi, for giving me that choice, for giving me that opportunity. I still remember those two topics. The first topic was endoscopic vein harvesting. And the second topic was triple bypass surgery, which is part of general surgery. And here I am today in front of you, sir, 12 years later. <laughs> there was one more thing, sir. You know, I come from an Indian culture where 
people will call someone daddy when he is a biological father. But everyone there was calling you daddy, and I was very confused. How many children would Dr. Kukoi have? But now that I know that everyone calls you daddy because of their love and respect for you, because you've always been around, I know why they call you daddy. We love you too, sir. We definitely love you too much, sir. As a part of our family, personally, me, you like my father, my elder, elder brother, my senior brother. And I'm yet to come across such a humble guy, so respected, and yet able to build one of the best upcoming hospitals in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been there. I've seen that. Trust me, it is one thing to be watched for. The new Ace Medicare clinics, 140 bedded hospitals in a place called OTA. But entrepreneurship always comes at a cost. So let us understand from Dr. Vole Kukoi the challenges he faced being a medical entrepreneur in COVID times. Over to you, Dr. Kukoi. If I may request admin to make Dr. Kukoi a co host. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, my dear friend, Dr. Abik. Uh, your introduction has been so wonderful that uh, I feel like blushing. <laughs> yes, we've known uh, each other for so long. And uh, I think uh, that was way back in 2009. And uh, thank you for that uh, very generous and uh, uh, introduction. I. I'm told that uh, I have seven minutes for this uh, presentation. And so I'll uh, just uh, go straight away uh, into my presentation. Uh, I'm to speak on challenges faced by medical entrepreneurs in COVID times. Uh, as uh, Dr. Abik has said during the introduction, uh, this is just on the uh, sunny side of it, uh, the, on the humorous part of it. So we're not going to talk much about the uh, technical uh, issues here. I'm uh, just going to give you my little bit of experience uh, during the COVID times, which started in Nigeria uh, towards the end of February uh, 2020. It all came as a surprise. Uh, I think early in the year, we never had anything of this magnitude before. So actually there was no chart to follow uh, when the news of a uh, Corona virus uh, broke up. It was so sudden, it was so rapid with so many changes occurring uh, within a short period of time. And of course, with such uh, issues, there are so much unpredictability that nobody knew exactly what was going to follow the next second. And uh, believe sorry to uh, interfere, Dr. Kukoi. If you can yes, just please. speak a little slowly, because there are people from variety of countries, and our okay. English accent varies from okay. different places. So just All speak right. a little slowly for everyone to follow. Okay. So um, we realized that within a few weeks, the whole world was uh, upside down, and it was like uh, the whole world was uh, shut down and uh, it uh, needed some repairs. So everybody was confused. Everybody did not know what to expect uh, next. And of course, for those uh, who were used to the internet, there was so much information on the internet. And uh, every day you kept listening to the numbers as they were coming in, numbers from every part of the world uh, first of all, from China and later uh, countries in Asia, and then uh, it went over to uh, Europe, Americas, and then, of course, uh, Africa also came in. Uh, initially, the figures were uh, on the slow side, but within a few days and weeks, we were hearing of thousands of people who were infected uh, with the coronavirus and uh, also with the casualties that followed. For us as uh, doctors, it was so uh, enormous that uh, we felt we are doctors and nurses and other medical professionals going to war. And this was a war that uh, we didn't prepare for. It was a war that um, nobody knew exactly what the arsenals should be. 
And uh, so uh, for an enemy that uh, was not known, it was very difficult to attack uh, the virus as it came so rapidly. You also recall that uh, there are so many theories about the origin of uh, the virus then and uh, about the nature of the virus itself and also the characteristics of the virus. And there was no conclusive evidence on many aspects of uh, uh, the coronavirus. We never knew, and I think up till today, we are not very sure of the origin and this. Well, we now know some symptoms and signs of the disease, but at the initial stage, it was so difficult uh, for any doctor, for that matter, to know. And because of this, uh, treatment options or opinions were also as varied as uh, countries that were involved. You see uh, treatment uh, advice from China, from America, from uh, Europe, from India. And of course, there was no consensus on uh, how to attack uh, this common uh, enemy. So it became uh, a cause uh, for serious uh, concern. And uh, because of that, there was also an emergence of fake drugs, fake treatment uh, patterns, non-tested drugs. And even at the time, people claimed that uh, they already had uh, vaccines for uh, the illness. But I think uh, the most important uh, aspect of uh, COVID-19, as far as uh, uh, we are concerned there, was the emotional drain on not just the medical personnel, but uh, the whole citizens as a whole. There was emotional and psychological turmoil. We had uh, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, but uh, also more important were the fake news that were coming out from every corner of the world. And uh, there was a sense of uh, hopelessness and uh, loneliness that also followed and uh, the alarming death rates. All these issues were what uh, caused a lot of emotional drain uh, on everyone, including the medical personnel. And of course, we know that uh, people could not hug one another. And we also, we do know that the shortest distance between friends is hugs. So when all these things are removed from uh, humanity, uh, it, it became less interesting that uh, what was happening to the old world. And of course, uh, this, this gave rise to a picture of doom and gloom all over the world. Uh, people that uh, you've been used to before, now you are caught away from them. And uh, another issue was keeping up with the various policies. You recall that the WHO was uh, dishing out a lot of uh, policies at the initial stage. And uh, after some time, they were also reviewing the policies and uh, things kept changing. That uh, one actually wondered whether WHO was a uh, uh, actually in charge of the situation. Uh, coupled with this, we had national and local policies and guidelines. For instance, in my country, there were a lot of uh, policies that came in. And apart from this, we also had um, state and local government policies and guidelines that uh, uh, actually confused uh, some of us uh, medical entrepreneurs and uh, actually had a lot of uh, influence on how we were treating our uh, patients at uh, that time. Well, uh, another major uh, thing that resulted from this COVID pandemic was the economic uh, impact that they had on uh, medical practice. At the initial stage, because it was so sudden, uh, hospitals did not have stock of uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. And uh, within a few weeks, there was a serious shortage of uh, PPE. And of course, with such a shortage, uh, the prices kept rising and rising, and uh, it was out of reach of most hospitals. This was coupled with uh, the income that was not coming in because of uh, the total lockdown of hospitals, of people's uh, lifestyles, and uh, all that. But in the face of this, we still had to maintain the hospitals. We had to make them uh, go on running. And uh, it was like uh, the income was decreasing, 
but the uh, cost maintenance was uh, going up. So the hospital was losing on both ends. And uh, there became a dilemma, a sort of problem between choosing whether to keep the hospital open so that uh, you can receive some income or you want to close it so that uh, you reduce the exposure of your personnel uh, and uh, ensure that uh, they are safe and they're uh, well. So uh, the decision was uh, actually difficult whether you should keep your hospital running or you should close it so that uh, your staff will not be exposed unduly uh, to danger caused by the COVID. The effect of lockdown cannot be really uh, overemphasized. It wasn't just the physical lockdown that uh, was a concern. It was like uh, there was also a mental lockdown because uh, everything came as a, a rush and uh, one was uh, finding it difficult to just comprehend what was going on. So uh, there was both physical and mental lockdown. Uh, of course, we all know that flights, vacations, relaxations, and dream terms, tours were all truncated. Nobody could uh, participate or engage in any of these things. And these are things that make uh, uh, people alive, that make them feel happy, make them feel good. So these avenues were really uh, cut off and you cannot uh, just do any of them. Of course, we all know that uh, internal and international uh, medical and health tourism was totally stopped. It was totally grounded. Uh, we could not refer patients outside the country. And even within the country itself, uh, because of uh, uh, state lockdown, like in Nigeria, you cannot travel from one state to the other. And so uh, if you had a patient that needed to be uh, referred to another facility, it was uh, very uh, impossible. So here we are, uh, you have a patient, uh, you want to refer uh, to another part of the country or even outside, you are just not able to do that. And it tells a lot on uh, the doctor that you are not able to give the care that uh, uh, you normally have given. So for the doctor, you feel like you are being imprisoned uh, in your practice. You cannot do what you are expected to do. And uh, you feel uh, that you are not discharging your duties to your patient. So these are the feelings that uh, really bothered us as uh, uh, medical practitioners. But I must say that um, we had some relief from the coping strategies that uh, came uh, during the pandemic. Like I said earlier, it was a question of uh, doom and gloom when it first started. But again, in order to keep going, we have to develop a positive mindset uh, that uh, the bloom and the boom uh, uh, will soon uh, arrive. We all know that uh, laughter is one of the best medicines uh, in the world. But uh, coronavirus is not a laughing matter, not even uh, up till now. But again, in order to survive, you have to put a little bit of laughter here and there so that uh, you can keep yourself going. And this is some of the things that uh, we had to do in order to uh, get going. We know that uh, laughter helps to connect with others and be re-energized. And uh, these are some of the little, uh, little things in nature that uh, keep you going. We also know that uh, laughter activates the feel-good hormones and reduces the stress-related hormones so that uh, a combination of this would uh, actually make you feel that, uh, yes, things may be bad now, but uh, there's a ray of hope uh, for the future. A lot of jokes were passed around uh, during the corona period that uh, actually uh, made people to relax. And I'll just share some of them with you. Uh, there's a cartoon that says that you should continue to wear masks, not only to prevent virus, but to avoid overeating. And uh, we all know uh, why that is important, because uh, everybody was locked at home. And uh, if you kept on eating and eating and eating, uh, that in itself uh, will yield to problems later. 
uh, and of course the aim was to flatten the curve by social distance and not to fatten it by overeating. And uh, there was this uh, joke from uh, South Africa then that I just want to share that uh, during lockdown, if you go to a party, you will be put to jail because of Corona. But if you're already in jail, you'll be let out because of Corona. Uh, that sounds like a, <laughs> a, a funny word. So, uh, and there was this other joke uh, of uh, a wife and the husband going shopping, wearing masks. And uh, when they came back home and removed the masks, the wife just discovered that uh, she brought home a wrong husband. So these are jokes that were flying around uh, during the COVID and uh, it actually tried to uh, reduce the tension, reduce the fear, reduce the anxiety uh, that they were facing that time. Now, uh, looking at the future, what, uh, the, what does the future hold for us as uh, medical entrepreneurs uh, uh, during this period and after COVID? The most important thing is to note that uh, there, there should be a paradigm shift from the traditional mindset of uh, medical practice. Things are changing and things will continue to change and uh, we just have to uh, take that uh, into consideration. And uh, there's a joke that uh, we have to prepare for the coronials. Coronials are children that are manufactured during the COVID period. We all know that uh, during this uh, lockdown, husband and wife are locked at home. And uh, between, uh, I think between February and uh, now, and uh, you should expect that uh, nine months after, there's going to be a boom. Uh, in the rate of uh, birth and uh, delivery. So a good doctor will actually prepare for that and uh, upgrade the maternity uh, services uh, in anticipation of this. Uh, we also have to go back to the drawing board as medical entrepreneurs uh, because it's like uh, this virus uh, has uh, really uh, cause a lot of damage. So it's like we have to uninstall 2020 and uh, reinstall another version because of this virus. So we have to go back to the drawing board and uh, look at strategies that uh, will make us survive uh, uh, the future after COVID. I think the most important thing is to think and invest in uh, information technology. We have seen during this period that uh, IT is the only thing that has uh, sustained most businesses. Uh, including uh, the healthcare industry. So an investment in information technology will be uh, most appropriate and the most uh, uh, significant at this period. Things like uh, teleconsultation, teleradiology, telemedicine and all that uh, uh, areas that uh, a good medical entrepreneur should look at. And finally, let me say that uh, a new normal has come to stay and uh, we can definitely not go back to the old ways. Uh, COVID-19 has uh, defined a new way of life and uh, it, it has to come and stay. So I'll just end by showing you this, um, uh, another thing I got from the internet. I think it summarizes uh, what I've been saying that everybody just woke up one day and uh, discovered that um, everything has changed to the extent that uh, even people cannot kiss, cannot hug, and uh, cannot do the things that uh, they've been doing. And this can really cause um, psychological and mental torture. And it also tells us that uh, there are forces and factors uh, on this earth that are beyond man that man is just uh, staying here for a short while and uh, some forces are bigger than man. So uh, I think I've been trying to uh, inject some humor uh, into uh, the presentation. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Abik once again for uh, this uh, great privilege and honor uh, to take part in this um, uh, webinar. Uh, HBG is uh, one big family that uh, we love uh, associating with. We've been together for quite a while and uh, I must say that COVID-19 has prevented me from uh, 
coming to India to enjoy uh, all those jokes and all the uh, things that uh, HBG offers when we come to India. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abit, and uh, I want to thank everyone that has listened. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kukoi. Uh, thank you so much. Admin, if you can bring me back on the screen. Uh, Dr. Kukoi, you can stop, stop sharing kindly. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now, I love the second last slide where there was this particular mention that the wife got a wrong husband home. I do not know whether the wife was happy or the husband was. But I wish them good luck. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. There was one more important thing, Dr. Kukoi, that you mentioned that uh, we, as WHO is coming with the new declaration about coronavirus, coming out, declaring new symptoms almost every week. Uh, three weeks ago, they said even the loss of smell and touch, uh, smell and taste are also symptoms of corona. I hear that last week they have now acknowledged that Corona is airborne. Yes, uh, you are right. But sir, then isn't it that love is also airborne and the qualities of Corona and love are so simple, so similar, both are asymptomatic in the beginning and then slowly and slowly when you start falling deep into love, exactly like Corona, you finally end up being in bed. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> Well, okay. So, uh, if anybody has any questions to be put on to Dr. Kukoi, please put it on, on the chat box. Uh, the next on my list of speaker is a gentleman from Kenya. His name is Paul Rishu. Edwin, if you can put the spotlight on Paul Rishu and if you can kindly unmute him as I introduce him. Um, Paul. How should I introduce him? Because when he was introduced to me, I was really amazed. Paul loved long sticks. He was trying to push the balls into the holes. Sometimes he would use nine holes in a day. Sometimes he would use 18 holes in a day. The guy had some stamina for sure. But please don't get me wrong here. I'm talking about his golf. So, you know, the golf he plays with the sticks and the balls and the holes. So please don't get me wrong here. But, you know, beyond this, there is another aspect of him that we should know. Uh, he has created one of the most well-known brands in publications related to young children. It's known as Minano World. And now along with his wife, they manage it to many, selling it in many countries of Africa. But Paul spends most of his time keeping himself fit and updated. Paul, because, you know, you are a fitness freak, we chose to give you this particular topic. How would one keep healthy in the lockdown? Yeah, we don't want to use those tires, you know, it's very heavy. So uh, give us some tips beyond the tires. Paul, on to you. Wait a second. Uh, we will need to unmute you. Just wait a second. Go on, Paul. Am I on now? Yes, you are. Hi, guys. Hello, this, you, is, Paul. this is uh, Ponya, India, Nairobi, Kenya. COVID has been an exciting experience for us. We have learned that there is life beyond kissing and all those things that uh, doctor mentioned about. And uh, when it came to us, uh, it actually caught me when I was uh, away on uh, my annual Christian retreat. And uh, when we were told that uh, there has been a case of uh, corona uh, discovered in uh, Kenya, 
um, the first thing that uh, the group did is to get into a very serious uh, session of prayer. And uh, it has worked because uh, all of us are alive. Um, many of us um, have had to stop the conventional day-to-day -day office uh, routine. At Ponya, India, uh, the sky is uh, the roof that we are using. As you can see, I'm working from, uh, from the new office. What this does is that it gives us the opportunity to interact um, with our patients. It gives us the opportunity to interact with our partners without having to worry too much. It gives us the opportunity to do the required social distancing protocols. It's been, it's been quite exciting for us, um, if I may say so. Ponya India only does India as a destination. So when uh, Dr. Habik told me that uh, there are no more flights to India, well, I think the message was very clear that uh, we will not be able to deliver our services the way that uh, we have been uh, passionately doing it. Thank free technology has uh, helped us to continue sharing our medical reports, interacting with the doctors. And other than the physical interaction, which is, which is important, uh, technology has helped us to keep afloat and to keep our patients getting the normal um, specialist opinions that uh, we give them, discussing with them their treatment plans, negotiating a cost for them. And we have accepted that Corona is going to be, you know, the, the, the new norm. And therefore for us, I would now say that uh, we are more or less a business as usual. Most of our customers are golfers and therefore we interact a lot in golf clubs. Now one of the areas that the government uh, rocked was the golf clubs. Fortunately, the golf clubs have now been uh, allowed to open. Uh, there are new regulations, very strict regulations, but we are happy that uh, we have started doing our interactions with the golfers. Uh, this morning, uh, we had traveled for a meeting about uh, 150 kilometers out of Nairobi, a place called Muranga because uh, there are certain things that needed to be, to be addressed and it was easier for us to go and address those things there than here. And because the government has allowed us to travel outside Nairobi, it's now easier to reach out to our patients. It's easier to reach out to the interest groups that um, we have. And uh, when the sky is open, we believe that it's going to be easy for us to start uh, getting the patients uh, all going to India as they used to go. Now, how have we managed to keep fit? Well, a big said, we use what we have. The gyms that uh, we are members to are no longer available. And therefore, much as I like uh, playing golf, that is not a spot you can play at home. And uh, we have been using whatever tools that are available to us. My favorite tool has been a tire, a used tire. And I'm amazed at the many things that a tire can do. I'll be able to share on video later on, on some of the exercises that uh, we've been doing on the tire. The lesson here is, you really don't have to go to a gym to remain fit. We have also been, uh, with uh, Madame Jane taking care of uh, some birds, the geese. I am as yet to, to be allowed to get uh, a taste of those uh, geese eggs. She tells me that uh, the geese must first uh, produce chicks. And I'm, I'm patient. I'm hoping that uh, soon she will allow me to start uh,
testing uh, the geese eggs. Um, we've been uh, fortunate to spend some time on the farm. We've been fortunate to go out of the office confines and within the limitations that are allowed, we have kept in touch with our friends. Some of our families are outside the country and therefore uh, the, sim, the, the Zoom technology uh, has come in handy. What do I see beyond this? I see an opportunity where we will not have any geographical limitations because now we are used to using technology. And because of that, Konya India sees a future where there are no limitations. We are able now and we will be able to attend to queries to patients from all over the world. Now, that is not an opportunity that uh, we thought would come during our lifetime. So for our friends in Nigeria, our friends in Iraq, our friends all over the, the world, don't feel shy to ask uh, Konya India to help you out because we now have had a chance uh, to test out the available technological tools. It is now possible for us to deliver the same level of service uh, that uh, we have been used to um, way, way, way beyond the East African region where we have been operating. Abik, thank you for making us a, a part of your family. Um, we would have loved to come for those many hospital visits that uh, we have to make so very often, but uh, we are sure that uh, opportunities will arise for that to happen. Dr. Abik. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you so much. I know exercising is very important for you. I do not know whether you want to keep fit or is it that because Madam Jane cooks so wonderful, I have been proxy to it so many times, that you get fat very often and you really need to burn those calories. So good thing uh, that you are keeping fit. It is very difficult if, if my home would cook such a good, good food, it will be very difficult for me to keep fit. I also hear that you have been traveling, you went to the farm, you went outside. You know, during the lockdown traveling, even within the intercity in India, uh, was very, very difficult. We were completely locked down in our homes. But then uh, you did offer your help to people across the world, especially to those people from seven countries that are attending this webinar. The numbers have gone past 65 by now. And uh, I would like to tell them, make friends with him and go and visit Kenya. It's a, such a beautiful country. The countryside is so gorgeous and the national park are so amazing. It is once a must visit during your lifetime. Please do visit Kenya. Uh, I, I, I have been there so many times. I know it's a very beautiful country. Well, that brings me to our next speaker. And thank you, Paul, for that. Our next speaker is Dr. Malan, Manal Naseh from Iraq. She is a gynecologist. Now, I did notice when I was talking about Paul that he loves the sticks and the holes and the balls, Dr. Manal was raising her eyebrows. Because what is a passion to someone is a profession to someone. Now, it might be a passion for Paul to play golf, but it becomes profession for Dr. Manal to bring out the outcome of that game. Dr. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Maran is a very eminent gynecologist from Iraq. But Dr. Manal, I wonder, when you sometimes go out to and tell to the couple, especially the male uh, in the couple, uh, that, oh, I've got some good news. You are about to become a dad. How many times of them, they say, wow. How many times would they say, what? And how many times would they say, why? So, you know, these are variety of questions. Uh, it may come to a male when you break that news that he's about to become a dad. Ladies and gentlemen, 
as Dr. Manal answers that question, let us hear from her a little more on this. She will speak on the subject, impact of COVID on human behavior. Dr. Manal, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Apik, about this uh, uh, for this introduction, and uh, thank you to give me this opportunity to join this webinar. Um, okay, uh, I will start sharing my lecture. Just a minute. Okay, uh, as an introduction for, uh, for my presentation, uh, as we know that COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, is by definition, the definition is a significant uh, uh, threat to humanity. Uh, the I think we have lost Dr. Manal because of problem with the internet. Edmund, can you check if she's online? Dr. Manal, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes please. Yes, uh, uh, sorry, I have uh, unstable internet in my uh, country. Okay, again, and this is my problem. Don't worry about your unstable internet in your country. My whole country is unstable right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, is it shared now? Yes. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, the pandemic is straining our healthcare and economy system in a way that is significant on the obvious. Beyond this domain, COVID-19 poses a profound threat to our most basic human motivation, especially human connection. While the threat to human connection is nearly universal, this, uh, the specific pathway by which COVID-19 impacts our mental health is likely variable across individuals. If we want about the, the social media and the infodemic, uh, uh, infodemic uh, the first few months into during 2020, information and news reported about coronavirus disease were rapidly pu published, uh, and uh, in the social media on the social network site. And uh, this panic news about the number of people getting infection and the death due to coronavirus. This will influence people's perception of coronavirus and the chronic stress due to negative news will lead the brain to respond either to fight or to run. This news give uh, you the blues the social media funds our fears to keep us uh, give uh, give us the daily feedback of coronavirus so the are they define that uh, the number of the newly infected people the dead the treated on the under recovery cases this news will increase the anxiety of living in this pandemic worrying about the loved ones and our health and the stress of financial uncertainty can all independently cause serious mental strain. Then the, some of them will respond and they will not believe it. So the good news is that people do not necessarily believe it and when they don't believe it they will get rid of from the stress or from these all bad news they hear but the bad news is that they don't if they don't 
believe it. They will not follow the instructions and they will not protect them from getting infected from this viruses. And after that, hundreds of posts spread misinformation about coronavirus and they are being left online. This is include false cures on the medication on the remedies, home remedies, and anti-vaccination. Uh, I think we have again lost Dr. Manal. Her internet is as unstable as the global economy today. Dr. Manal, are you there? Admin, can you check if Dr. Manal is online? She is showing us online. Uh, Dr. Manal, if you can stop sharing and just speak. If you want, I can share it on your behalf. Dr. Manal, do you want me to share? You can just speak if you want. Yes, yes. Can you, can you just share it, please? Can you share it? Yes. You were on this screen. You're okay, on. Thank you. Uh, you know uh, my slides? This is your slide. And whenever you tell me, I will move on to the next one. Last, when we heard you, you were on this slide. OK, thank you. Uh, the, uh, we were talking about the posted of spread uh, misinformation about coronavirus and uh, that is the left uh, online which is include the false cures and anti-vaccination propaganda and theory about harmful effect of the facial mask invalid investigation and when bad management in the hospital next slide please dr manan okay. next slide is on next slide yes that is good inputs from social um, media. It's okay. I will find it on my site because it is not till now. Uh, okay. So you can open your presentation simultaneously on your laptop. Yes. Okay. Yes, on my site. Okay. Uh, okay. So the, the slide name is good input from, from social, social media. media. Yes. Yes. Okay. The, about the good input from the social media, we have. Uh, general advices from the social media, uh, proper hand washing, uh, avoid contact face or nose, social distance, wearing face mask, and stay at home, uh, and uh, become all these things well known by the population, and they know uh, what is the sign and the symptom. Uh, they all, all know that is, uh, it could cause fever, high grade fever, and uh, diarrhea, uh, the loss of the taste and the smell and the, uh, all these symptoms become well known uh, from the social media and this, uh, the people now, uh, when they get uh, infected from the early symptom, they will uh, go to the hospital and to find uh, whether they get infected or not. Okay, next slide. People response to social media. Okay. Uh, the response of these people for the social media, they either they don't believe it and refuse the orders, or they fail to use tools and you either to poverty, as you say in this uh, picture, that is this boy he didn't have a mask, so they he make his own mask by himself, or they have a misunderstanding. Uh, can you play this movie? 
the movie of that man, the misunderstanding of the of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, what uh, the uh, uh, the orders on uh, making jokes or they make jokes uh, out of penny movies, uh, panic and extreme fe fear or depressions. Okay, thank you. Next slide. This is a economy. We all know that is the effect of coronavirus on the economy. The global economy experienced serious uh, tension due to the spread of the corona pandemic. The world economy was badly damaged. Uh, the prospects for economic growth fell dramatically. Trade movement uh, slowed, and the uh, global financial market uh, recorded sharp loose losses, and this also includes the industry. A job crisis for those who are unstable work, work in low economy and unemployed are also this will affect the women who are uh, generally earning less and holding an uh, insecure job and living close to poverty. Okay, next slide, please. Marketing. Okay. About the marketing, uh, due to the quarantine panic, people respond either to uh, they go to the market and buy everything they found in the market uh, because they uh, they get uh, panic from going out and uh, getting infection from uh, other people uh, so uh, they try to buy everything in the markets or they they fear spending their money because uh, they they are not confident that they will come in their income stream will be continue so this will affect it the market also. Okay, next slide. Social isolation. Yes. About the social isolation. The, the, in the current period of self-isolation, uh, this will affect uh, all the people, not only the, uh, the old people or the ill people or mentally ill people. They found that there is many researches now they uh, we found it uh, uh, in this in this research that there is an elevation in the blood pressure, morning spice in cortisol level, and disturbably uh, sleep. And also, they found that uh, there it is affect the cognitive function also, the cognitive performance, and decrease in increase in cognitive uh, impairment in undergraduate student. Even during single course related study, uh, yes, next slide, and next slide on. Also, uh, perceived social isolation or loneliness is uh, also it, it affects the mortality rate from heart attack other than other cardiovascular risk. And uh, moreover, health is during during a brief summer vacation. They found that is there is affect wound healing and increase the rate of uh, uh, wound, uh, slower wound healing than their others, uh, less isolated peers. And due to pandemics, uh, we found that uh, there is increased risk of addiction, uh, not only the drugs, uh, tobacco smoking, alcohol, uh, all this increase because of the social isolation, violence, and this violence, they. Uh, uh, also, they, we, the, it is reported uh, a lot of cases, uh, many cases about uh, home violence against children, uh, intimate partner, and old people, and level of a crime. All this is increases because of uh, the social isolation and the quarantine uh, period. Okay, next slide. How the pandemic affected sexual behavior and sexual health? Regarding the uh, sexual behavior and sexual health, because of the social distances and limited access to contraceptive and abortion care, affect the sexual and the reproductive health, especially in adolescent and in young adults. Uh, COVID-19 is not uh, a sexually transmitted infection. Uh, it, is a, it is a sexually transmitted infection and should av avoid a physical contact with uh, infected partner because it is it is, can be isolated from the uh, from any body fluid and even from the vaginal or seminal fluid it is can be isolated so it is 
so the infected person uh, should be uh, uh, avoid physical contact with him. Okay, next slide, please. Working at home. The working at home, it is not only affect the people emotionally, uh, emotionally it is affected by fear and angry, fear from they may lose their work and then get angry and sadness and uh, inability to cope with their children and we see in this picture. And it is also it affect them physically as they will get a, a pain in their neck, pain in their back and the sleep disturbance this is uh, this is all uh, symptoms appear and emerge uh, at the time of uh, social isolation and in the quarantines okay next slide children in quarantine yes uh, uh, across the world due to the coronavirus and because of the quarantine and national wise school closure, uh, the uh, children are affected by uh, this physical distances. And uh, if we go online and we will find that the WHO uh, give a tips for healthy parenting in the time of coronavirus. These are, uh, we can see that as infographic, and uh, uh, online infographic about one-on-one uh, -on -one time, staying positive and creating a daily routine, avoiding bad behavior and managing stress, and talking about COVID-19. So um, children at home, we should give a time for them to talk, uh, a time to them to explain what is coronavirus and how to get to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this um, uh, the, um, uh, get uh, rid of from the infection itself, washing their hands uh, and to give them a time to uh, study uh, a routine time. Time this is will be should be a routine time for study because routine gets rid of from the stress and can manage stress stress itself. Uh, uh, and even those uh, teenage, this teenage need a special care because they want to communicate with their friends and we can help them to connect with their through the social media and their direct uh, vi uh, vision uh, uh, supervision and uh, and there, there is a lot a lot of advices we can find it uh, in uh, WHO or uh, infographic uh, about this situation uh, Oh, okay, next slide, please. I will explain and that next slide. Should I go to the next one? Dr. Manal, should I go to the next one? There is a YouTube link here. Should I go to the next one? Movies also explain uh, the uh, way of uh, uh, when we are staying at home, uh, how to wash this, uh, our hands, uh, to stay, uh, to, to wear gloves and wear masks. Uh, I share with my children, uh, the, uh, the, this, is, this movie, it's, uh, you, you can play it, please, if you can play this, this movie. Uh, uh, yes. Dr. Manan, I might have to move away from your slide in that case. Let me see. Yes, here uh, that uh, uh, me and my children, one of them, uh, no, it is, you can't play it. Uh, I, 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 I put a, a small... Uh, no, there is no is, connection. Uh, it's just a link. No. There is no connection. No, no, not a collection. You can just click on the picture. Yes, just click in the picture itself. Yeah, yes. This one? It's just yes, only this, this much. Yes, this one. And you can go online and you see that the whole movie, one of the, this, my little boy, he is uh, the actor and the, the director was the older boy. And we have uh, one of them is the photographer. So we, we make a team in order to make this YouTube. Uh, they get a lesson from uh, how to, uh, to manage 
patients with coronavirus, how to get safe from coronavirus, uh, and also that we didn't lose time and uh, uh, we get fun together to make these movies. Okay. Uh, this is I'm... a way to how to, 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 uh, to uh, manage with the children in the quarantine. Okay, next slide. Dr. Manal, I'm moving on to the next slide, but you will need to yes, rush yes, yes, because yes. we are running short of time. Yes, yes, okay. Okay. Uh, old age people and uh, people uh, who are uh, living in the quarantine uh, because they are delicate and they may get infected and when they get infected will be severely affected uh, so that we should be uh, clear with them if, uh, uh, and we should focus on them if they get the message uh, and that they understand that is coronavirus is, is not a joke uh, and uh, they should follow the instruction and add to that we should support them uh, psychologically uh, and uh, uh, we should involve them in a social supporting team and uh, keep touch with them through technology and also uh, we should have a safe access to the nutrition, food, basic supplies, money, medicine to support them, their uh, physical health. Uh, and uh, we should support uh, supporting the and uh, protecting the old people living alone in the community in this um, everyone business. Okay, now, next slide. Okay, next slide. Is a, is a small movie. Okay. Should I play it? Yes, this is a small movie. And this is a small movie. You can see that this one uh, of uh, our movies. And uh, uh, I, I am uh, proud of uh, this uh, medical staff from my city who is singing for the old people and who are getting sick and the sick in the hospitals. You can play it now. He is singing for him for them. And this is one from the national songs. Dr. Manal, we can't hear you because this uh, song is playing. Should I move on to the next slide? Yes, okay. Yes, this is all. This is the, the last, uh, the last uh, slide. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, thank you all. Uh, I hope that uh, you get benefit from this uh, presentation. Thank you. Sure. I will email it to all the participants. And uh, if Dr. Vole Kukoi is, is still listening to me, uh, Dr. Kukoi, are you there? Uh, you know, Dr. Manal, Dr. Kukoi organizes a CME every year uh, in Nigeria, a place called Ota. I will request Dr. Kukoi to invite you in one of his next CMEs so that we can all uh, hear what you have to say to the larger masses. In any case, Dr. Kukoi in his presentation gave a good news to you that after nine months, we can expect a very good business for gynecology. Good, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so next on my list is Ms. Ina Dashenko. Uh, admin, if you can just put the limelight on Ms. Ina, please. You know, uh, Ina is Vice President of International Associations of Physicians Involved in Medical Tourism from Ukraine. I would like to ask Ina before she starts presenting, how do you remember such a long designation for yourself? You know, it's quite long. Vice President for International Association of Physicians Involved in Medical Tourism. So it's quite long. Isn't it difficult to remember this entire thing? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when I first met Ina, uh, I found a very lovely lady, a very humble human being. And, you know, when I first met her, I found a young girl fresh out of school. <laughs> At least that was the impression of mine when that I gathered. And then I traveled to Ukraine. Uh, Ina invited me to have dinner with her family. I thought I'm going to meet her parents. Instead, I met her husband and two kids. And I was zapped that this young lady, she's not actually so young. She's a mother of two. My God, Inna, you have got lovely family with you. I keep watching, seeing the pictures on Facebook. But having kids in a lockdown, I am not sure how to handle them. I have two at my home and they're a little too much for me these days. 
So Ina, over to you. Let's hear from you how COVID has impacted the family lives. Try to keep it short because we are running 15 minutes late in our program. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Apik, for such a wonderful presentation of myself. And I know you have two sons. You showed me pictures when I traveled to India. It was a lovely time, very fascinated time that we spent together. Thank you for that. And um, actually, briefly about myself, uh, I'm trying to be quick. I'm managing uh, the association, as you said. Uh, it's an uh, association of physicians in medical tourism. And uh, we're operating with many other countries, but we're located in Ukraine and uh, uh, we're cooperation with the, on the field on medical tourism professionals. So we connect doctors, hospitals, facilitators and medical providers from different countries. Also, we organize uh, um, a trip to, to different countries and now we can organize a training. I mean, studying and graduating from medical universities of Ukraine for foreign students, medical students. So that's for me as well. Uh, back to my topic, uh, the topic for me appeared quite unusual because I'm not a psychiatrist or even not a medical worker. Uh, but uh, due to having a family and also I have many friends who have family, families, I can speak about the topic. And also I searched something in the internet while I was preparing for today and as I found some data and compare it with what I faced personally staying on the quarantine, uh, I realized that basically the whole world's experience and my family and my friend's family's experience are not completely different. They are very similar. Uh, so please put, more, put on my presentation if you, if you can. I definitely can. Please. Mm -hmm. I was, I was making it uh, last night, it was a very interesting time, I was searching the internet and I was, in, I, and I was thinking about the audience that will be hearing to me, so I was, yeah, that's it, that's it. So, and uh, yeah, I would point some specific things which most families face during this quarantine time. Can you please, uh, next slide. First is distance learning for kids and distance work for parents. Uh, with all these challenges that family members have found themselves being under one roof like never before. Uh, parents were working double or even triple duty and some are even taking on the new role of teacher like me and uh, I remind what I've learned in my school and uh, this experience was sometimes comic, sometimes dramatic, it depended on the subject and on the, of the level of my, page, my patient and uh, of course, of on the kids' temper, uh, I would say. Take into account the survey made by American Resource Life 360, I found it in the internet. The majority of moms and dads reported to be challenging. Moms uh, are more than six times more likely to be responsible for the teaching than dads. And mostly, moms were still uh, managing the household and trying to retain some kind of career. I personally face this, so I can confirm this fact. <laughs> Next slide, please. Quarantine parties with friends and even business partners. Uh, we had to discover new ways of communications, new online platforms, new methods of staying social. Uh, but families were staying social virtually. The survey says that the vast majority, almost 90% of families have been socializing virtually with friends and families who don't live in the same household. Online meetings, online birthdays, even online dancing became a normal way to communicate for us. Next slide, please. And we go to no, no trips policy, no, uh, no vacations abroad as family likes, liked before. After a week in quarantine in our country, uh, the families had to discover uh, our own country's possibility. Was it successful or not depended on each family's expectancy. But anyway, that was better than staying locked down all the time and uh, when there was not even allowed to go to the park. Political no travel of the majority of countries caused many ruins of private businesses and family plans, no doubts and a couple of exams, 
uh, examples. One of my girlfriends uh, had to left his husband due to visit her homeland, states, stuck there for four months, she stayed, she stayed there and their marriage fell apart. The other example, one of my business partner, he is now listening for us, hello, dear Yasser. Uh, he visited Ukraine in March and had a range of planned meetings, nearly had to stay here because of the flight has been canceled. We helped him to change the flights and leave earlier, not to stay here and to be locked down here. My personal business trips for, with more than uh, 30 people, to China, Athens, Finland, USA, Tunisia has been postponed. It influenced my family too. So no travel, no travel politic, it's influenced a lot. Next slide, please. It's of course about wearing masks and washing hands habit. It became normal now to wear masks in public places, to use sanitizer everywhere and touching any surface. Even kids reminds me all the time, do, do I put a, the wear masks, uh, spray the antiseptic? I cannot judge whether it's bad or good, but for sure this habit will stay a uh, normal style for a long time ahead. Speaking about not funny, please next slide, Abik. Uh, on the contrary, it's more dramatic part of family lives. Uh, there are still many people, family members with chronic diseases, pathologies, conditions, oncology, or other heavy cases whose problems haven't gone anywhere with the COVID appearance. They face troubles, really troubles, without quality, timely, and appropriate medical help. I don't even mean now international patients. Of course, no, I'm talking about local patients which were left with their pain want one. Some patients couldn't have the chemotherapy or planned surgery or even good care in hospices. And that's really horrible. Next slide, please. We're going back to surveys that I mentioned before. Uh, they found that quarantine and staying at home hasn't been a huge inconvenience for families. As you can see on the slide, 66% of families report that staying at home has been moderately or slightly inconvenient while only 26% reporting it's been very or extremely inconvenient and 9% share, uh, shared that it hasn't been inconvenient at all. And also to our surprise that not all family are ready to get back to their regular routines. Once staying at home mandates are lifted, a quarter of families, 25%, will be still uncomfortable going back to their regular pre-COVID-19 routines. So it's going to be a good habit to work from home. And the next slide, please. When asked to rank stress factors about stress, families report the top stressor is too much screen time in the first level of stress, followed by financial obligations lack of ex exercise or sports time, activity, homeschooling in the next one, not enough alone time, cooking, working from home with kids, and lastly, of course, how can we forget about this, running out of toilet paper. <laughs> and uh, from relationships to homeschooling, screen time to socializing, of course family life has certainly changed. But despite the many challenges caused by COVID-19, my hope is that families come out of the pandemic even stronger and more connected than before. Next slide. Thank you very much. Stay, sa stay safe and healthy. And thank you for your attention. Let's be connected. Thank you so much, Ina. Uh, it was indeed a short, brief, and beautiful presentation. Thank you. you rightly pointed out, in fact, that our our biggest stress the biggest worry is the online time spent specifically for children because their classes schools everything is going on online you know when i go back home and i tell my younger son not to uh, watch cartoons on mobile or ipad he says why can i not watch that it's like too much of screen time and then he says when i am doing my classes why don't you say the same thing so, you know, my, they have started pointing us out. Um, indeed, the, these, the life has become online now. And I'm worried that when this gets over, will we ever go offline? And if we are going to date online, if we are going to study online, if we are going to, you know, do online, how this world is going to go on. 
Well, thank you I again, do it, Ina. I like to do it offline. I like see people. I like hug people. I like speak personally. So I hope that it will be over soon and we'll meet personally. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Ina. Thank you so much. The next person on our speaking list is Miss Effie Bugua. Uh, Effie, good afternoon to you now. You know, when I first went and Effie, when I, I started knowing her, she was a very senior uh, personnel in Bridam Insurance Company. And everybody used to speak about Effie, Effie, Effie. And I always thought that Effie is the short form of efficiency. And because she's an efficient person, everybody calls her Effie in short form. But later I discovered that it is not only that she is efficient, her actual name is also Effie. She has now moved on in her career to become a healthcare consultant, a coach and a trainer. I wonder Effie, who coaches the coach, who trains the trainer and who motivates the motivator? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let us hear from her as she speaks on the topic, how to keep the self-motivation up. Effie, over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Abik. Uh, thank you to the audience who are with us here today. Thank you for the fellow panelists. Those are amazing conversations coming through from the various uh, countries. So a pleasure to you all. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Good to know Effie Efficient. So you've given me a new, new verb for myself. I always say um, if I describe one verb uh, that describes me with my first letter name is E-engage. So I love to engage. Uh, and so audience, I want to engage with you. I know we don't have much time. I'll try and keep it brief. Uh, but I would like to just start by sharing a story. And thank you a big for having us all. Uh, so I'd like to invite you on a journey. Uh, would so you like to become a co-host? Yes, not, not now. No, no problem. Not now. Later. Yes. I, I would like to invite the audience, including the panelists, on a journey. And uh, how are we going to take this up is uh, by use of your chat box. Uh, but of course, because Abik is a longtime friend, he will go fast as you're chatting so we can keep each other engaged. Remember, I love to engage. And that's the only way we say we can empower each other. That's why we are here today, to empower each other. So I have a story. Uh, and uh, I would like each of you to add a sentence to the story. So this is the story. Uh, once upon a time, there lived a hare and a tortoise. Aha. Uh -huh. I hope we are all together. The hare dared the tortoise to go on a race with him. So a big complete the story in one sentence as the audience also begin to chat in the chat box. Uh, what are their thoughts around it? I would like us all to put on our thinking caps. Let's just chat in the chat box as a big also gives us a sentence to start us off. You want me to end the story or begin it? Continue the story, continue the story. Would you like me to, re to repeat? Oh, uh-huh. That's right. Okay, you're chatting? Okay. Audience, keep, keep bringing in your responses too. Let's continue with the story. Why is it not going? Uh-huh. Thank you, Abik. There goes Abik. Abik says I was spotted by a hunter. Uh, audience, audience, I know we are here, panelists, let's keep the story going. I love to engage, remember, we need, we are here to empower each other. Aha, uh -huh. Smita says it was raining heavily, thank you, Smita. Mary G, they had fun as the hunter chased after them, thank you, Mary. Let's keep the responses coming in, aha, uh -huh. Dr. Wale, sorry I missed the storyline. So this is the storyline, Dr. Tari. Uh, once upon a time, there lived a hare and a tortoise. Uh, the hare dared the tortoise to go on a race with him. Uh -huh. So we have gotten some responses in. Thank you so much for the engagement. Remember I said FE engage uh, and FE efficient. <laughs> so thanks for the engagement. Uh -huh. uh, the hare slipped on wet mud. Thank you, Joy. Let's get in more responses from the audience too. 
Uh, we are here to engage all together. Thank you, Paul. The tortoise won the race. Aha, uh -huh. thank you. So keep them coming even as we continue. Let's, let's keep the chat box busy. Uh, so yes, we're here to talk about self-motivation. Even in this season, we've heard all about uh, what has happened. We have experienced it. But the question then remains within us, what is our circle of influence? What, what do we have around us that can really uh, speak to how we come out as winners in this season? So I would, I would like to welcome you to just uh, share with me in this conversation again, as I put up a slide, I think you can put on the first slide, uh, which will just really help us refocus, reset, even as we're getting out of this COVID season. Um, so what is coming up is a slide uh, of a circle that we call the circle of influence. Uh, the circle of influence to me personally and even to my coach, my coaches has been a circle that we have used in this season to really just come out on the other side as winners, even as we determine uh, what we can control and what we can, uh, can't control. So from the image there, you can see the circle of concern and the smaller circle, there's a circle of influence. So when you think about day-to-day -day life, uh, we have so many things that concern us. Of course, now in this season is, uh, for example, Dr. Ina said she loves hugging, she loves socializing. Now she can't do that. I am also a social animal. Uh, but then we can get online and see uh, how we can communicate together. Uh, so yes, we can influence how we communicate. Uh, but right now we can't really influence the going back to the big gatherings. Uh, we can't really influence uh, even other people around us that may not really be able to see the brighter side of it. I, I mean, we can't control that, but we can influence them to see that, yes, we can come out of this together. Uh, so the circle of concern, as you see it there, uh, is basically people's, people, people things that we really cannot influence and some that we can influence and some that, yes, we say we can also control and others we can't control. So for example, COVID, we can't control COVID, uh, but we can control our discipline around it. We can control the, uh, the measures that we take not to contract COVID. So when we say that we can control something and come out uh, being winners and looking at it um, as a point of, 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 of success for us, then we need to grow our inner circle. So the arrow pointing at the center is speaking to our inner self basically the inner approach to life. So when we, when, we, when we take up life positively, then we are able to say that we are coming from a proactive space. One of the things that we can say we are doing now is even having this conversation on the funny side up. We are looking at it more proactively as opposed to looking at it from a reactive space where we say we are not coming out as winners. We have no solutions for our businesses. We have no solutions for our lives. We have no solutions for our families. Then that way we become reactive by not looking at things positively. So uh, the next slide, please, uh, a bit. The next slide uh, for me on my right uh, is the circle that really you have grown to look at how you can influence everything that is around you to be positive that is in your control. So for example, what is in control right now is that we can influence our thoughts, we can influence our happiness, uh, we can influence that we can get out of this season not in gloom and doom, but in bloom and bloom. Uh, we can influence the fact that yes, Paul cannot play uh, uh, golf right now, but he could influence his working around that. How can he exercise in this season? We can influence a couple of things around us and that is why we need to remain proactive individually looking for support systems, even for our businesses, for our lives, for each and every one of us. So when we think of the story of the hare and the tortoise, and thank you for your participation. Uh, this is an old folk tale that many of us would remember maybe in our younger days. And if you don't, I challenge you to take time to just listen to that story. My 10 year old daughter loves stories. She loves stories. So it's been a season of really just uh, rekindling that aspect for me, being of course the fact that we are working from home and they are also schooling from home. So just rekindling that aspect of stories and seeing the beauty that stories bring, that we can dictate life even in this season and give ourselves joy and happiness. So the story of the hare and the tortoise, of course, 
the hare dared the tortoise. We all know tortoises are slow in life, uh, but the tortoise took the challenge to still run with him. And one thing the tortoise said, now in the real life story, not in the story that we just ran with together, the tortoise actually said that he might not um, uh, refuse the fact that he will be in fear of running against the hare, but he took up the challenge. So there we see, uh, the, the tortoise is actually operating from the circle of influence by saying that I can do it, reacting positively, which is being proactive, uh, that even if probably he didn't know he was going to win, he still took up the challenge. And so, yes, the end of the story, the real story, the real story, the real, real thing, guys, is that the tortoise did win the race, the real story. So in this season we are in, can we ensure that we continually motivate ourselves by influencing the things that we have control over. The things we don't have control over, let's spend less time on them. Uh, because when we spend less time on the things that we don't have control over, what we end up doing is exactly what is on the right side of, of the circle, where our circle of influence grows. And when it grows, then even our emotions, our attitude towards life, our beliefs, begin to change, they begin to be positive. We begin to say, yes, we can go back to work. Uh, yes, we can go back to work with certain measures in place. Yes, I can use certain coping strategies. Uh, yes, I can't hug right now, but I can reach the people that I love in different ways. So can we challenge ourselves uh, to look at this season, even at, as a season that we can grow positively, a season that we can look at opportunity within um, the, the, the crisis so that we can all emerge as winners. So thank you a big for just bringing us even together to just sit in, learn from each other, empower and engage each other to grow so that we can increase our circle of influence individually, as families, as businesses, because we need each other and I need to continually motivate myself. You need to continually motivate yourselves. So guys, Think about the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise won the race. That was the end of the story. So you too can win in this season. And thank you so much, Abik. Thank you so much, Effie. Uh, I do not know how many males in this group will actually agree to your circle of influence. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that they can choose for themselves is what books they are going to read. <laughs> the remaining part are always decided by the wife. So, uh, so if the wife remains motivated, and that is what I'm trying to do at my home, if she's motivated, everything else is okay. Yes. I can continue to happily read my book. So that is my observation. Otherwise, wonderful presentation. In fact, what I will do is I'm going to mail this to the rest of the people on, on this chat, uh, on this webinar, so that they can all get something for them, at least some part of them they can begin with. Well, uh, that takes okay, me, thank you. thank you so much, Effie. That takes me to the next speaker, Dr. Miriam uh, from Uganda. Dr. Miriam, uh, can you put the spotlight admin on Dr. Miriam, please? Dr. Miriam is the head of medical business for UAP insurance in Uganda. I not only know her from many years when she was at that point of time working with Jubilee, but I somehow happen to know many of her colleagues as well, specifically those colleagues who report into her. Mm -hmm. Most of them say that her behavior is very predictable. You go to her with an issue and the first reaction she's, she's going to give is a big stare on your face. <laughs> And with that steer, it becomes almost impossible to lie to her. So you will always have to tell you tell the truth. And then she, in a very compassionate manner, will spend time with you and will solve your problem. This is what has helped her become a people's person. And Dr. Miriam, let me tell you, I know a lot of juniors of your, I know a lot of your past colleagues and present colleagues. They are all in praises with all the good words about you. Let us, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, hear from uh, what makes her a natural leader and she as she speaks on what 
kept me going during the uncertainties. Dr. Miriam, over to you. Uh, thank you, Abik, for your very kind introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all here uh, at this webinar. Uh, we definitely appreciate that COVID-19 has been taking us through very uncertain times. And at UAP Old Mutual, we believe that we are your certain friend in uncertain times. And we've been trying to do everything we can to make our customers comfortable and to help them go through these very difficult times. Now, when the initial lockdown happened in Uganda, we had 14 days of total lockdown, which meant we were in the house uh, for 14 days. And that's the first time it's ever happened in my life. I, um, I love going out, I love meeting friends. So being kept indoors for 14 days was quite difficult. And so uh, my children convinced me that it would be a good idea for us to start watching some movies. So every night we had a movie night in the house and we'd uh, watch a movie or two. So there's this night, we watched the movie with a rock and it had this very scary whale. The whale was big, it was electronic, and it would rush and eat people up. So it was quite a scary movie. And that night, I didn't sleep. I think the whole night, I kept seeing the whale coming for me. <laughs> and I was screaming most of the night, help me! So many interesting things that uh, COVID-19 has come to, has brought to place. Uh, I believe it's been a time where we've been able to bond a lot with family, uh, with our busy schedules. Sometimes we don't have enough time to stay home with our children. But this lockdown, um, spending time with family and just being there together, uh, being forced into one house the whole time. So we bonded better. We were able to spend time together and uh, it was really exciting for the children, uh, especially. So what kept me going through this uh, lockdown? I think one of the things that kept me running is just thinking about how do we navigate? How do we stay on board and on course? What are the opportunities that are there? What are the innovations that we could come up with? And some of the things that we were able to do is do some psychosocial support. So just find um, somebody, a friend, a colleague, who you can talk to about the worries and the concerns that uh, were driving us down uh, during this period. We also came up with telemedicine, uh, constantly encouraging customers to still be able to access support, but from a, uh, a phone call from home and being able to talk to a doctor and getting a solution while at home. Uh, just being able to look at the brighter side. I think for a long time, we kept hoping there would be an end to COVID-19. And I think that kept us going. But like the other presenters have said, it looks like COVID-19 is here to stay with us. And therefore, we have to adopt the new normal, the new way of work, and uh, the new way of survival. I think the other way we managed to survive the lockdown really is um, family Zoom sessions. So my family, we have Zoom sessions three times a week where we come together, we find out how each of us is doing, uh, we pray together, we encourage each other. And that has also been very exciting. So we always look forward to our Zoom sessions where we catch up with everyone and we know what's happening in everyone's life. But we've also been able to encourage each other that we believe there's going to be life uh, post uh, COVID. And maybe there's still going to be life even with COVID-19. It's just finding the best way to be able to survive and to be able to navigate it. The other key one is just I've just learned how to have gratitude, just to thank God for all the blessings that I have. Uh, when you look at the turmoil, the economic depression, the financial challenges across the globe, just the fact that we are okay, we are alive, we have food on the table, a roof over our head. So gratitude on a daily basis and just uh, being thankful for the little things that we have 
and the little things that, um, the little blessings that we have every day. The other thing was we kept exercising. So we would go for a walk with a family at least an hour every evening. And it's something that we have kept on going and we hope is going to be our new family tradition. And during these walks, we are able to chat, catch up, run, at the same time keeping healthy and uh, making sure that uh, we don't put on too much weight uh, from all the eating uh, that we're doing around uh, uh, COVID-19. The last one really is positivity, just a positive attitude, uh, looking at the brighter side of things, uh, even where um, there seemed to be no hope. So one of the things I did is try and get off social media, try and get off the updates. I had um, enrolled myself to be getting updates from World Health, World, World Health Organization on a daily basis, and it was just so much gloom. So each time I saw numbers were increasing, people were dying, it would really, really put me down. So I decided to stay away from all that information. I've been keeping away briefly, away from CNN and BBC, just trying to look at the positive side of life. And for the Uganda scenario, Uganda has been very lucky. There's been no death yet. And um, we continue to observe, we continue to do all the things to protect ourselves from COVID-19. So we can definitely continue to navigate uh, these difficult times uh, by staying positive, by catching up with family and just being there for each other. And the last one is just constantly, we need to just keep looking out at what's the other opportunity that's available. COVID-19 is opening up a few opportunities. We just need to make sure that we don't miss them and we're able to catch up with them and uh, um, enjoy ourselves as they open the airwaves and as we hopefully uh, go back to our normal lives. So thank you very much, Abik. Thank you so much, Dr. Miriam. There are two questions for you on the chat box. Paul from Kenya wants to ask that if uh, the lockdown has been lifted and if they can travel to Uganda, what's the news? Okay. so. The internal lockdown has been lifted. Uh, we are able to move in our private cars. They opened uh, the public transport. They opened most of the districts, but the borders are still closed and the airports are still closed. So we still have lockdown. We still have curfew. So we have to be in the house by 7 p.m. every day. Uh, so it's partial lockdown currently. We hope that maybe in August, as the rest of the region, uh, we may have the borders open. But for now, they are still closed. Just the last question for you, asked by Jane. Uh, and a very quick answer, please. When the mom screams, what happens to the kids? <laughs> they are screaming too. <laughs> So, so, Paul and Jane, so, I hope you got your answers. <laughs> Paul, even if the borders open, do not forget to take permission from Jane because she's the one who is giving you the clear, the internal immigration clearance. True, true, true. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, Effie, okay. check, check, check the chat box. Nalita is saying hello to you from US. Um, that's a message for you. Effie, coming back to our next speaker, um, whose name is Alexander. Um, there is always the word, the great attached to Alexander. Somehow we in India, we call Alexander the great. And he, he has been a great friend indeed. Alexander, welcome on board. Uh, Alexander belongs to the beautiful country of Romania. I wonder if all the Romanians are as romantic as our friend Alexander. You know, Alexander, whenever you meet uh, him, you will find him having a charming smile, almost always well-dressed, as if, you know, he's full of hope that every female around him is looking at him, Alexander, if that is the case. But for some reasons, most of them actually are. So I feel jealous of you sometimes. And uh, life keeps producing those right kind of opportunities for him. 
congratulations for you uh, you know uh, ladies and gentlemen if i may invite mr alexander constantine for to speak upon new opportunities presented by the present situation of covid alexander over to you yes thank you a big thank you my friend uh, for the for the presentation It was really too much but uh, thanks anyway um uh, i hope i want to salute everyone i hope everyone is uh, healthy and uh, safe uh, this is uh, not a not a good period but uh, we will move on uh, regarding uh, i'm not going to to speak so uh, so much uh, because of the of the time there are others uh, follow so everyone should uh, should have the chance uh, regarding the opportunities uh, how can i say first we have to help uh, to help our countries to get out this uh, this period uh, with uh, as much uh, energy resources as uh, as we can and uh, of course uh, after uh, after this will uh, will finish i think uh, we have to think of new opportunities uh, especially if we learn something uh, uh, regarding this uh, this period and uh, we should uh, we should restart uh, everything and uh, we should uh, also uh, prepare if uh, if other uh, others will uh, will follow but uh, first of all uh, i think uh, the opportunities uh, is uh, to improvise uh, the opportunities are uh, for uh, uh, everyone needs to adapt to this uh, to this situation and uh, if uh, improvising and adaptation are going side by side i think uh, uh, we uh, we will succeed to to this uh, for uh, for my country uh, for us uh, uh, we are trying to to help with uh, with all we can with resources with uh, advices and uh, also uh, with the uh, hope and uh, because this uh, this period it's not uh, it's not the best one anyway uh, the we should focus uh, more on stay positive think positive and uh, act uh, positive because uh, without uh, positivity i don't think uh, the the situation will uh, will became uh, how to say uh, encouraging but other than this uh, i hope everyone should uh, should take care of uh, of himself or and uh, also for the for the family uh, stay safe and protect the others and uh, in this uh, in this manner i think uh, we can uh, we can pass this uh, this period uh, I want to to thank once again for the for the invitation. I hope to see every one of you uh, healthier and safest uh, the next time. And uh, I wait uh, I wait for other uh, for other webinars uh, from time to time to see and to find out what's the situation around the globe. Uh, from a person that are directly uh, implicated in this uh, in this thing thank you very much again abnik uh, goodbye to everyone and uh, please uh, stay happy thank you so much alexander for taking your time off i know you have traveled in last few days and it is just uh, about time you have just entered home but you still took this so thank you thank you the last speaker on our list is a guy called omar farooq from sudan a young man and as i was speaking about alexander that he's from the world of romance called romania omar farooq is just the alternate he is a very serious kind of a creature and it does not matter what the situation around him is you can see him on your screen now he's constantly on his job 
He's always working, always serious about what he has to deliver to his patients, to his organize, organization. And Omar, we are so very proud of you because you have got this attitude of solving issues all the time. And for him, mask or no mask, it does not actually matter. Simply because in any case, half the population in Sudan are always masked. Because the females there, they are always are covered and with their beautiful eyes shining on. But I'm sure Omar does not have to look, have any time to look into those beautiful eyes because he's always working. But having said that, Omar, let me hear from you on your topic, if the mask is good, if the social distancing is better, or at the end, if the business is best. Omar, over to you. Hi, sir. Could you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. You can take off your yeah. mask if you are alone in the car. No, it is just for joke. You know, when I met someone, when uh, I'm using the mask, and he said, Oma, I can't hear you. Why you are doing like that? Mm -hmm. I say, you know why I'm using the mask? He say, why? You are like a Batman. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, thank you that for uh, that uh, opportunity um, and that introductions. I am Omar Farouk from Sudan. Yeah, um, could you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, um, I know that time left, but uh, let give me just two minutes speaking about something uh, that using mask um, become that. that essentially part of our life so that in uh, effort to prevent the separate of the COVID-19 and it is very important to wear the mask and handle it correctly to protect yourself and to protect others from um, uh, infection that COVID-19. But it is very important to change the culture of people to uh, explain the uh, uh, importance of the, the mask because when you ask someone to use the mask, I'm talking uh, especially about my country, okay? Yeah, we can hear you, carry on. Yeah, when you are to explain that, you ask someone, if you didn't use the mask, I think it is you have two ways. Maybe you are not sick, you are sure you are not sick, and you don't use, uh, don't need to wear the mask, or you are don't care about other. So anyhow, uh, to save your life and to save the others, you have to use the mask. But the question now, how? Omar, we can't hear you. Are you in the right connection? Omar, we can't hear you. I think we have lost connection with Omar. Uh, in any case, I have learned that in Sudan, as well as in Ethiopia, uh, there is a very poor connection. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, one of our speakers who was from Ethiopia could not join us because the government in Ethiopia has, uh, you know, temporarily taken the internet down because there were some riots in Ethiopia. Uh, earlier during this week and since then Ethiopia is under curfew. So uh, with that, um, I don't know, Omar, are you back? Um, Omar has not, has been disconnected, but in any case, with that, we have come to the far end of this webinar. If anybody has any question, you can put it on. We have got about two, three minutes left. We can take one or two questions for anyone if you have or if you want to put any comment, you can put it on the chat box, please. Um, in last one and a half hour, six minutes less than uh, nine, uh, 90 minutes, that is in last 84 minutes, we have traveled 22,000 kilometers across the globe. And that is called a jet speed, I guess. We have gone from India to Nigeria, Nigeria to Kenya, Kenya to Iraq, Iraq to Ukraine, Ukraine back to Kenya, Kenya to Uganda, and from Uganda to Romania, uh, to Sudan, and back to India. 
And this can only happen when we have got a family and which stays together, sticks together, prays together, eats together and chats together. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been chatting for the last 90, 90 minutes. This was not, I, I know that most of the information shared uh, by the panelists is a very common information. It was, as I told you and as my colleagues have been telling you, it's more an opportunity to talk to each other on the lighter side. Oh, there are people from Egypt. I'm so sorry, yes, sir. And I hope you were you traveled back safely to, um, as Ina mentioned, right in time. Uh, yes, there are people from Egypt. Um, Musavania tells me that very enlightening presentations, much appreciated. Thank you, Musavania. But the whole idea is to gather together and chat and break the ice because it is, it's just enough. We have been worrying about a lot of things just for enough. It is time we bring the life back and start, you know, something which we love to do, which is to remain connected. We hope that we will continue to remain connected in times to come as I request my colleagues to organize another bit of chat with some different kind of topics again. As you see, we spoke about health, but at the same time, we did not speak about health, which is our main line of business. But then again, we spoke to each other. Thank you so much, all my panelists, for being there, sparing your time. I am greatly indebted. I am very, very grateful to you. Thank you, Michael Adams, for being there from Turkey. Uh, so you see, we have people attending this uh, webinar from over, in, in fact, now from nine countries across the world. Thank you, everybody. I know it's, uh, you know, we are on different timelines, but we are connected. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you again very, very soon with the new set of, and yes, happy birthday, Afi. Happy birthday to you, if you are there. Uh, Afi, are you there? I, I, yes, I, I am. <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday you. from all the 65 attendees that that who are here here, and I, I and thank you again specifically for taking time out on your birthday, especially. Um, uh, very. Uh, if all those people who are unmuted, please, can we sing a happy birthday for Afi before we sign off? One, two, three. Here we, Here we go. go. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Abby. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Effie, I think this is the first the birthday you're receiving birthday wishes in one go from nine different countries. <laughs> That's what family is all about. Thank you so much, everyone. This is Dr. Abhik Moitra, your own yes, sir, yes, madam guy. Bye bye. See you soon. Once again, as my colleagues plan another meeting. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.